Well, hello everybody. I uh, finished the, um, the five boards basically that I've uh, built. The update my Dynaco uh, uh, upgrade boards. And uh, the first one I'm going to tackle, uh, I've built this board here, which is that one there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it in this little baby right here, which is the Dynaco Pat 5 uh, preamplifier. And uh, that'll upgrade the power supply. And then uh, following that, I've got two phono boards and two line input boards that I'll be uh, installing. And then we're gonna have a good close look at all of the, uh, the switching. And uh, we'll be doing an upgrade to the RCA jacks on the back of it and hopefully bringing this up to better than new standard. So what I'll do is start my build, uh, go into uh, um, lapse time again, uh, time-lapse photography, and show you the uh, uh, installation of this and the other four boards that I've installed plus the, uh, the RCA upgrades. So. Without further ado, we'll get on with the business of upgrading a Dynaco.
All right, that completes the uh, first stage of the uh, upgrade. So what I've done is I've installed the PAT5 preamp replacement power supply. It's the PAT5 PWR assembly and followed everything in the manual and of course did all the checklists and everything. I went one step further and what I did was uh, cleaned up all the knobs. I cleaned up the face plate. The, uh, the knobs were really, really, really dirty. So I had to use some uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol to get into the grooves and clean them all up. So no more, uh, no more oily skin kind of uh, stuff on the knobs. So they're nice and shiny and bright. Same with the faceplate. Um, it's as good as it's going to get. There are some minor, minor scratches. Uh, the volume here is uh, a little bit faded. You know, what I may do is print out a, a decal and uh, we could probably replace that. Yeah, but otherwise it looks really, really good. Um, and also I uh, took out the old board that you see here. You can actually see a bunch of burn marks and stuff on it. So, and the, <clears throat> and the other thing I noted was Pretty darn sure this was a hand-built one. Uh, this was a kit model. Uh, this is the PC32 power supply board. You can see really dark spots on it where I think the thing got really, really hot over time, especially on the front here. And it looks like uh, new caps have been put onto it. These are not the originals. And uh, from the service manual that I found taped to the bottom, it does in fact look like the power regulator was uh, a uh, bunch of parts were replaced on it, so that sort of confirms my suspicions, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, the, uh, the soldering, really poor quality soldering on this board. And uh, looks like they just uh, gobbed lots of solder on because they didn't really know what they were doing. So um, anyway, that's replaced, so that's out of the loop. So now we've got a nice, clean, uh, modern, uh, double layer uh, board in its place. I did all the, uh, the voltage checks across the various uh, terminals that it says to do in the, uh, the manual, and everything checks out with intolerance. So the board is assembled correctly, and I'm actually very happy with the result. So the next thing I think I'm gonna do is probably Press on to either the photo or the line uh, stage um, sides or boards. Yeah, I'm not sure which one I'll do first here. I'll just assess which one's going to be easier to do in which order and all that sort of stuff. So that'll be coming next. And um, the other thing, oh, the other thing I did was I went and uh, did uh, deox it, and I. I basically hit all of the, uh, the pots on this and gave them some really good exercise. And they're nice, they're, they're actually feeling quite, uh, it's like they've, uh, they've cleaned up a bit. The pots actually weren't all that uh, bad. The only thing that was bad were, uh, that I noticed that were really noisy were the, uh, the push button switches, which I've also hit with deoxid. And I exercised those. I also cleaned up the plastic buttons. They were all full of finger jam and all that kind of stuff. So I basically cleaned those up to make those look a little bit nicer. And uh, yeah, I think this thing is uh, coming together nicely. So we'll uh, do some more cleanup and then we'll of course change out all these RCAs, which was uh, one of the kits that was uh, provided. So next stage will be... Uh, one of the uh, one of these four uh, boards right here.
Well, that, uh, that completes the uh, PAT5 preamp uh, phono stage upgrade uh, installation. So it was two boards here, these two green boards here, uh, rewired to the power supply board. And, uh, and then it links up to the, uh, from the rear uh, phono to the, to the uh, front, left and right uh, channels for your uh, phono. Uh, the interesting thing about these boards is they've got these little dip switches here and in the back of this manual, uh, in the back of that manual actually, there's a number of uh, uh, settings that you can uh, play with to uh, optimize the sound of your turntable. These are actually moving magnet uh, phono boards, so they're not meant for moving coil, which would be considerably more expensive. It would be bit, probably better to go off board to do that. So. Uh, Basically, you have some uh, 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 different settings and you have to read the manual basically and you can try it out for a different gain setting like this one here. This uh, pot here does uh, uh, different gain settings. So that would be at the far end would be 0 dB gain, 3 dB and then 6 and then 9. And that would actually set the, uh, the volume, how much your volume is actually uh, stepping up. So your volume ladder basically. Uh, which was one of the problems that we uh, had experienced when we uh, used this one. Of course, you can't set the, uh, the gain uh, settings. There's no dip switch on this one. Interesting to note that on the uh, line stages that we're going to do next here, they don't have uh, dip switches for uh, gain settings. So uh, we'll have to figure out how that can be adjusted. Anyway, um, so everything's installed. The other interesting thing to note is these kits, I don't believe, were meant to be installed simultaneously uh, for the simple reason that uh, the manual calls for this one to use the plus 15 and minus 15 volt uh, terminals plus the ground off of your uh, uh, power amp, uh, power, or, uh, power board. Um, so what we've done here is I've used the plus 15 uh, plus 15, minus 15 is the blue. And then you've got the black, which is the, uh, going to H1 here, which is the, uh, the, the, gr the ground or neutral, or ground. Um, so what it does is it'll feed these two boards, and then you can see these three wires here feed the front board, and then from that we're going to feed this board, and in, in turn that one will jump over to that board uh, to provide power. That way you don't have to do any Y connections here on the, uh, on the uh, power board. So that's how I think it's going to go. Um, now I'm going to uh, start labeling all of the wires that disconnect off of here. And it should look something similar to that at the end. And that way when I pull these things out, I'll know what wire goes to where. And uh, we will... Uh, hopefully not confuse it or cross any wires and that's why we take the uh, the care of labeling each one and then uh, we'll use the uh, brackets here uh, to marry these two boards together similar to how those two boards are and they link up with the brackets and then we put it on the base and then we reconnect everything up and then following that stage we'll uh, start working on uh, doing the uh, RCA upgrade uh, kit. So, still lots to do. Um, I do have, I did uh, voltage measurements and everything. So power supply is delivering plus and minus 15 volts here. Um, and grounding to chassis is working. Um, so I think everything up to, to this point, you know, uh, hoping that the, uh, the photo boards are wired correctly and I'm pretty sure they are. Um, we can uh, put assemble these two, do the RCAs, and then uh, go to a test. So, onward we press.
right, that concludes the installation of the PAT5 preamp new line stage installation. And basically I've reassembled everything. I just have to put the screws back on. And uh, the only thing I noted, and I'm gonna take this back off, is, so I put everything in when I measured up the uh, positive, it's supposed to be positive 15, minus 15. I was actually getting about positive 15.9, or actually it was getting 15 and 15 when I had the photo boards and the power uh, supply board on. And then when I've attached the, uh, the two line stages, uh, I got it all connected. So I've got the voltage plus and minus going through here, through here, passing onto the board and then onto the board device feeding the feeding the power supply from here so anyway um so i'm getting like about uh 15.9 now on the plus side and about minus 13.99 roughly 14 volts on the negative side so i'm not sure if that's just because there's now a little bit more load on it and i'm stretching it too far or whether i should have y junction Anyway, um, I'm going to go and do a sound check and see how it sounds. It says plus or minus one volt, so I think I'm within the uh, parameters. Um, it's just odd that, uh, you know, everything was 15, 15, and then as soon as I put these two boards on, uh, it went to 15.9 and uh, minus 13.99 or whatever, almost 14 volts. So uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll give it a try and do a sound check and see how that goes. Um, and th the only other thing I have to install, of course, is the, uh, the RCA jacks um, set up, but I wanna try it like this first before I start monkeying with, uh, with jacks and all that, because I've made a lot of changes here and I just wanna make sure um, it's gonna sound good before I start uh, ripping the back end here off. Um, these things don't change, it's just the RCAs that'll change on the back. So we're gonna go do a sound check and see what she sounds like. Hopefully it'll sound good. All right, here we go. This is the moment of truth. Um, I've now plugged it into the uh, power amplifier, the Dynaco uh, Stereo 150. Uh, Stereo Fit 150 has had nothing. I've not looked at it at all. It's just uh, stock as it arrived. Um, I noticed that a few times it's uh, sort of popped on the, uh, you know, the, when you power it on. It uh, doesn't always happen, just uh, occasionally. And certainly does uh, extend the, uh, the drivers when you turn it off. It uh, doesn't matter the order or sequence that you uh, do it. It just... Uh, I don't know, it's an old amp, it probably needs new caps and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, it, it really does sound uh, good, I think. Um, well, that was before um, we uh, did the updates here. And now I've uh, just uh, updated it and put the case on because it says you need the case on to uh, avoid hum. And here we are, let's uh, give it a whirl. So first, uh, well, we've got uh, Her Majesty over here. She seems to be uninterested, but she's my uh, chief critic and confidant. Anyway, um, so I've got it plugged into uh, output one on the uh, the preamp going into the one or the two left and right channel inputs on the power amplifier. And then I've got speakers going to a speaker box. Number one is the only speakers that are hooked up to that speaker box right now, and that's my Pioneer HPM 100s that you see there. I've got the uh, turntable uh, plugged into Phono 1. I've got the volume turned down. Uh, everything here is flat. Tone controls are bypassed, no filters, uh, both on stereo. Uh, input and tape 1, uh, tape 2 are bypassed. So really all it's gonna do is go to Phono 1 first. So uh, and then I've got uh, the CD player down here which is unfortunately hooked into my EQ. I just didn't want to rip the whole back end so I just popped it off my uh, tube amp here, the uh, RCA, and it's going into uh, spare here on the, uh, the preamplifier. 
and I've got it on defeat right now so this curve here is not affecting the uh, the sound it should be just flat and uh, let's hope this thing uh, works good so we'll uh, drop the needle uh, we'll lower the needle we won't drop it we'll just lower it how's that so we're gonna power up the preamp volume is down we're on phono and then we're going to power up the amp and let's see if it nice and quiet power up that's a good sign and turntable actually what i'm going to do is pop on the low filter just so it doesn't uh, hyperextend the drivers because that can happen when you get feedback with the uh, the cartridge and let's see if we got some sound oh yes we do look at that tempo song here hopefully and that's my man Astro Color here my uh, good buddy is a drummer for that band a local band and here we go listen to that pretty darn good. So let's check out the controls here. Um, as you'll notice I'm switching. I had a, a higher volume so there is a bit of a pop when you click into Phono 1 so the best thing to do is not do it when you got full volume on. Balance. Left to right working in the proper direction and working correctly no static no noise right now I've got the bass treble should not be working right now because I got the tone bypassed so let's pop in the uh, tone oh and immediately we get some bass this might be not be perfectly centered but it's pretty close and working good Treble, oops, a little bit too loud, let's put the high cut on, there we go, notice it's not feeding back, that's because the uh, turntable is way too close to the speakers, so let's bypass the tone controls, filters are off, and there's no static, so let's do mono. No static in any of these controls. I cleaned them all out. I'm not sure what that EPL is, but see how it pops? I think that's the amp, not the preamp. Filters, no static, tone control, input. So we got the, uh, we got all the controls nice and cleaned up. The only thing I haven't done is because I didn't have a quarter inch jack, I'm gonna do some contact cleaner to make sure that's a clean input. But it is really sounding good. So let's turn the volume down. Good idea is to turn your volume down when you're switching uh, inputs. So let's go to spare, which is where I have the CD player. This thing just rocks. Let's go to a song I'm familiar with here. Sounds 
Okay, we'll kick her back to Phono. Now the Phono input uh, settings you can play with on the board. That's in the manual. Really sounding good. Okay, I'm really happy with the sound. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, and the last thing I needed to do was to put the RCA jacks on. So uh, we'll do that and see what happens. So I'm going to start uh, rendering the video here and then we'll just tack it on the end once it's uh, once that's complete. So uh, a little more sound here. Man, that amp has really got some some balls. Anyway, uh, there you have it. Thank you for watching. We'll uh, do an update here once I get the RCA jacks on, and hopefully that doesn't uh, change anything. And I think we've got a working preamp.